Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I. My best friend, Marty Schultes, who is also one of the greatest cooks ever, has come <laughs> up with three recipes for us today. Would you tell us what those recipes are? Okay, so we're gonna start off, we're gonna make um, just like my favorite potato soup, because it's just a nice warm soup for you know this kind of year, the fall. Right. And then we're going to use puff pastry, which is kind of fun to use, and we're gonna make a veggie crown with that. And then we're going to finish that off and use the other part of the puff pastry and we're going to do apple turnovers. So it's just like a great warm dinner or even a nice brunch. Or fall, know. fall, mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that we're going to make is uh, from uh, the wonderful Chef Mex, which we didn't get to make on the show, and I'm going to get you treat, is it wonderful fruit tortillas. Ooh, that sounds good. And they're mixed different fruits that I brought that are all wonderful. And they're small tortillas we're going to use this time. And this from Paquita Moss. And don't forget, we for forgot we need the producer to give us our Corn Huskers Gourmet Deer Fat Spray. And by the way, I found out something about this. Yeah? One of the new doctors we work with, and actually scientist, is Tyler, Dr. Tyler. Here we go. Nugent, right? And he tells me this is the best fat that you should use oh, wow. for oh. everything because it's really healthy for you. Mm. So fat isn't really bad for you. It's good for you, especially for your health. So here's that. And of course, we have to remember our 360 pans, which we have back here. Yeah. And also our, what would you call this? A slicer, dicer, yeah. whatever. Uh, everything right? machine. <laughs> everything machine. And we're going to be using that today. So we're very excited, and let's start. And you want me to start reading the ingredients for you? Yeah, you go ahead. I'm going to start cutting the bacon up because okay. we need to fry this up. So right. I want to get this in little pieces. That's good. So we're going to the ingredients for the best Marty's best potato soup are one large onion, which we have right there, which we're going to dice. And I'm going to be cutting up the carrots in a few minutes. So I'm going to use about a cup or two. It all depends upon how much you love carrots. Two stalks of celery dice, which Marty's already started doing. Um, actually, eight potatoes peeled and cubed, which I'm going to be doing. Four cups of chicken broth, or enough to cover the potatoes. Three tablespoons of real butter. Three tablespoons of flour. One cup of heavy cream, or half and half. One teaspoon of dried tarragon. And we're going to use spinach, because spinach, fresh spinach, looks beautiful. And soup, and it tastes great, too. So, and salt and pepper to taste. So she is actually cutting up, or she cut up the bacon, and she's making it into small, uh, small, small little pieces so that it fries, cooks faster. And then we're going to add some of the vegetables to it. All right, so we're going to chop these up. But actually what we're doing is cutting these up into little pieces like that. Great knife, I love it. And also we're going to do um, the spinach, but we're going to make ribbons with the zucchini for another for another recipe that we have. So just do that, it's pretty simple. And all of our recipes, by the way, are on our website, right? Which is important for you to know, right? And that's the chefuni.com. And also we have our shows on all over the country and pretty soon we're gonna be in some other new foreign countries, which I'm very excited about. And that's on Simul TV, which I love. And all right, so I got the bacon that. going. You do? When we talk about doing carrots, um, you can put a little bit less carrots in this if you want. Carrots are sweet though, and I think they add so much to a soup. I like a little bit more carrots. Um, but growing up when I was a kid, my job was to peel the potatoes, peel the carrots. And you know, it wasn't until I was an adult that I figured out get a really good peeler when you're peeling carrots. A really good one, because I must have used the same one forever and it got dull. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to kind of show, you know, 
My mom was like, peel it like this, peel it yeah, down. Right. I go up and down, 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 up and down. That's fast. Done. Done. Look how awesome. quick that was. That was. I know. But it takes a really nice, strong peeler. Yeah. Um, and again, we'll just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And I just turn it as I do it, and I'm done. And I'm okay. done. So I think that's kind of one of those little tricks that you learn as, as you grow up. Um, when right. you learn to get a good knife, you know, get a good knife, get good tools in the kitchen, um, really makes a difference because peeling sometimes can be like drudgery, you're thinking, but really, if you go really quick, you it's know, not. and I do that with potatoes too, I'll hold them and I'll go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, they will say at my house that you take off most of the potato. It's okay. I'd rather peel an extra potato than try to get it as thin as possible right. people, <laughs> myself a lot personally. of people don't like to do it and that's a faster easier way to do it mark yeah yeah and i i love carrots in lots of things right? i do too i i just think they add they, they add, add so much color and they add yeah. sweetness to things right and we're going to be using carrots in a lot of stuff today all right my bacon's getting there it's just going to take a little bit, a bit to get longer. it brown mm -hmm. and how long does the soup take to to do Tell me. Is ah. this, you know, once once you get everything, a good 30, 35 minutes, I think. Right. You know. So is that enough carrots for you, or do you want me to do those too? Um, that should be fine. That should be okay. good. Yeah. We'll use these carrots for a salad or something. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah. you need me also, actually, to do the onion, did you say? Or do yes. you want to do that? Nope, you're, be my Thanks. guest. Be you. my guest to do the onion. Right, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and chop up a little bit more of this celery okay. here. I need a little smaller knife, if you don't mind, but I'll you take, can have this Okay, back. perfect. Yep. All right. Now, this is a big onion. That is. We probably only need maybe a half of, half of that. Half of that. Okay. Right, yeah. that. There is something satisfying about chopping, I will say. Yeah, I know. I love I loved to chop. And again, if you don't have really sharp knives or tools, yeah, invest. Invest in, in nice that. tools. Right. I can yeah. just like that. And when I chop my celery, I usually chop it into three. I take three yeah. long strips on it. Right. And then cut it in half again. That's and That fine. one's about right. So that I get nice, consistent pieces, and they're not too big. Yeah. Um, so what have you been doing, girl? You've well, got more grandchildren now. I do. I have a new granddaughter, Lorraine Camille. She's very cute. We're calling her Rainy. Rainy, that's My cute. My youngest daughter. Yeah. And her fiance have that. And then I'll have another grandchild yes. in January. January. A little boy this time, so that'll right. be five. Oh um, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So five it's a, boys. So it's a growing, baseball team almost, <laughs> right? It, it is a growing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a growing. Growing uh, Thanksgiving table, I say. Yeah, I say so too. You know, I have. We have now two great grandchildren, three great grandchildren, and Everett is the newest. Oh, that's a cute name. Isn't that a cute name? That is we have very cute. we have Sloan. So Aww. they're brothers. <laughs> Don't you love those names? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start crying pretty soon. In there <laughs> is, right in here, is the thing that you use to you remember go. we have these. I love tools. <laughs> Anything that keeps you away from the onion. Right. So yeah. anyhow, to make a long story short, <laughs> uh, we also have Madden. How do you like that name? Oh, that's cute. Too. He's the new, he's not the newest one. He's actually... The second oldest Aww. so of all the great-grandchildren. So my son, Jeff, the middle one, and so they he just became a grandfather over about a year ago, right? Aww. And Robert's, Robert Sloan, well, he had the first great-grandchild, actually. So we're going to put these in here because I don't need these now. And... So, is that enough onions, or do oh, you want to chop them even more? Probably chopped really, because we want to get them really small. Well, you know, I could have put them in the food processor, not the food processor, but the other processor, if you wanted them that long. Yeah. Real sh Whatever. We're going to cook these down. So, once I get the bacon pretty much done, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the bacon out, retain um, about a fourth a cup of the grease. Then we're going to go ahead and add this onion, celery, and carrots and sweat these and get these a little bit, um, you know, soft. Then we're going to go ahead and add the potatoes. Again, the same thing. We're going to sweat these a little bit, get them soft. Then we're going to start adding our um, stock to um, get uh -huh. that going. 
Once we have that going, then we're going to make the roux, flour and butter, get that going, make it into and a roux. Milk and milk or the, something? Didn't you? Once we, well, yeah. once, then we're going to add some spinach into it, wilt that down. Okay. Then we're going to add that into the stock pot with everything. Okay. Then we'll add the cream into it. Um, salt and pepper to taste. You know, vegetables always need, just always need salt right, to bring sure. out their taste. Okay, so, so we've got that. I have to do the potatoes next, so yeah. I want to put these over on your board if All you right. can. Put these here, Marty. Whoops, I just, don't worry. <laughs> oh, well, that's what Vegetables happens. flying everywhere. Yeah, they're going everywhere, right? So I, I could have put that in another bowl, but whatever. So here we go. And then I'm going to do the potatoes here. So I'm going yeah. to move this out of the way, put this over here, and then get the potatoes. So I may have to take a little short break for a minute, and I'll be right back on The Chef You and I with Marty Schultes and myself, Catherine Raker. We're back on The Chef You and I, and Marty... All, the bacon is done, right. correct? Mm -hmm. And what are you doing next? So I'm going to pull the bacon out of here and just, you know, dry it on some um, paper towels. Yes. I'm going to retain about a fourth of the liquid in here. Yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my vegetables in here and start sweating them down. And we're so, going to have the camera come over and show you, yeah. show how you do that. Mm. Right. You know, they say everything is better with butter and bacon. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum, yum. I absolutely it smells love bacon. so good. So we're going to come over that our wonderful photographer and videographer is coming over to show our, okay. our audience what you're doing next. Okay, that's good. All right. So I think this I need to get a little bit of this bacon grease out of here. I don't want quite this much, so I'm going to just grab a little bit out of here and just retain it for later in case I need a little bit more flavoring. Okay. You know, just you guys want to be really careful while you're doing this. But all that beautiful brown in the bottom there, that's going to be our flavor. That's going to give us some just absolutely gorgeous flavor in this. Now what are you doing next, Mark? I'm going to go ahead and get the vegetables in as soon as I get all of it a out. A little bit more out. Well, I want about a fourth to a third of a cup. I want I want some of that grease in there. I want that I want that flavor in there. I don't want all of it though. You know, you don't want yeah. it super super greasy. So right. I'm gonna move this side bacon grease out of my way so I don't tip it anywhere. Now let's turn this up just a little bit, not super super hot. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start off with the onions first because you want to get those nice and soft and add those guys in here. And translucent. Mm-hmm. Oh, like to hear that sizzle. Like and I that love, sizzle. love the flavor of potato soup. I'm gonna, what do you want next? Uh, the celery? No, I think I'm gonna use the carrots next because ne those okay. will be, so we're gonna get these a little bit more translucent. Uh-huh. Just a titch. Oop, got a couple and leftover a pieces of bacon in there, but that'll just make it taste better. I just love soup. I could eat soup every day from I can too. spring through all the way through. I uh, fall it doesn't matter. I love soup. Well soup such it's it's really especially when you're going through what I just went through, the root canal thing. Ugh. I had to eat soft food. Yeah. So soup yeah. is the greatest way and potato soup I love mm -hmm. more than anything else. And it's really good for you too. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? I would. I, you, you know, you get all your vegetables in. It, it's delicious. Yeah. Um, Especially if your kids don't like vegetables. You know, it's a great way <laughs> yeah, to yeah. fool them sometimes. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, my um, future son-in-law, one of them, he... Um, you have a he, lot of future son-in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> he really likes... Um, he likes my potato soup, but he loves to put onions on it, and he loves to, like, put cheese on top of it, too. I'm not as big of a cheese fan in soups. But, oh, my gosh, I made potato soup a couple weeks ago, and here comes the cheese out, and he's just pouring the cheese on. I'm like, hey, sure that's not cheese? Does he put bacon on the top of it, too? I already had bacon in oh, it. Oh, yeah, so already in there. Okay. Good. okay, now I'm getting a beautiful color with these. I'm going to go ahead and get these carrots in here. 
to sweat them babies down a little bit. There's something very satisfying about making soup too, or about just cooking in general, I think. It's just, you know, when you have the time to do it or you come home and you're just like, oh, I just need something to bring me down from work and relax a little bit. I think this is just a nice way to do that. Just moving things around and cooking it. All so right. that looks really good. All right, we're getting there, getting there a little warmer. Let's go ahead and get these in. All All right, and then I've got your in. potatoes for you next. Yeah. And just sweat these down. Okay, so the here's half of the celery. I'll put these potatoes in here. Okay. The onions right. and celery kind of remind me of, you know, getting up on Thanksgiving morning and, you know, doing the onions and celery and mixing it up and then making homemade dressing. And right. that's how I always think of Thanksgiving morning, of, of that smell of butter and onions and celery. All right. These. Okay. That's really wonderful. So the next thing you're going to put in is the broth or the potatoes? I'm going to put the potatoes in. I'm going to give okay. these just a few minutes right. more to okay. brown up. And guess what? This year I'm going to have my, my granddaughter here and my daughter and her mother-in-law. They're all coming for Thanksgiving this oh, year. Oh, fun. Isn't that fun? Yeah. I haven't had anybody. I don't think we've had anybody in a while that have come for for Thanksgiving dinner because everybody lives out of town. Oh. Which is sad, right? Yeah. And this year for Thanksgiving, our the big discussion is where are the high chairs all going? Yes. And my kitchen is only so big. It's not super right. big at all. And I'm just like, okay, I can put one high chair here and one high chair here, but eventually I'm going to need another high chair soon. And so, right. Well, we might have to take shifts or somebody's going to sit with a baby in their lap. There. We're going to take a short break, Marty, and we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. We're back on the chef, you and I, and Marty just put all of the potatoes that we peeled. There were like eight or nine potatoes, and we're going to show you now what it looks like. And we use Yukon Gold, and I find I like Yukon Gold potatoes better for soups than I do um, the other type of potatoes or even red potatoes or um, Idaho. I, I just like Yukon Gold. I feel like they have a little bit deeper flavor, and they cook a little bit easier in soups. So... All right. That looks this delicious. Is, oh, it smells so good. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so we're just sweating this down. Now we're going to go ahead and add our broth to this. And Here we're we go. Gonna, you want to cover it, right, Marty? Right, the recipe calls for about four cups, um, but I want it covered. I want to make sure this is all covered. And then I'm going to put a lid on it and let it do its stuff. So this is not quite enough to cover it. So I'm Here you go. A little bit more. Perfect. Thank you. All righty. That's two. So that. When do you add the butter? Oh, when you make the roux. I'm going to make the roux. Okay, so All that's right. covered. So I've used about uh, 32 ounces and another 16 ounces on that to go ahead and cover it. So now it looks great. I'm going to go ahead and get a lid on it right here. These and you know how to do it. Pans. You know how to do that, pans. right? And you pan. make it just... Go gonna turn it down just a bit, yeah. and I'm going to let this go ahead and do its thing. Okay. Now we can go ahead um, and start on our roux. So we're going to pull this forward. You need your cream, right? Well, in a minute, in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and take my butter. So I'm going to use about a half a stick of butter. And go ahead and get it in my pan. And then I'm going to go ahead and melt that down and add my flour to it. So I don't want this to burn. So I'm going to turn this on pretty low. Once I get it up here, I'm going to go pretty darn low with this because I don't want this to burn. When you get butter brown like that, you know, it gets that nutty flavor. I love that in cookies. Don't care for it so much in cooking, <laughs> you know, and, right. and things for like sure. this. So, oh, here we go. And the nice thing about these pans, uh, Marty, mm -hmm. uh, the most wonderful thing is they're easy to clean, oh. even if you burn the pans. <laughs> the they come part. out just like you see them now. Yeah. These are gorgeous. I love. I love the feel of them. They feel just heavy enough, and the handles are nice and long. And you can put it in the oven, too. That is nice. All right. Now we're going to get this down a little bit. All right, so this recipe will be up on the Chef You and I. Mm -hmm. That's the chefyouandi.com. 
and it'll also be on all of your regular television stations and online everywhere so you can see it okay yeah. all right we are get this almost the there almost. well <laughs> not almost it's getting there it's getting there again i don't want to I, I want it just to be liquefied. I don't want to burn it. You could quicken this up too if you want to just melting toss it in, it the, in microwave. the microwave. Throw it in the microwave to start off with, and then put it back in your pan and make sure it's warm before you add your flour mix to it. So the thing we didn't add yet to any of our um, soup yet is salt and pepper. And again, I'd add a little salt and pepper to start off with, but it's kind of to taste but vegetables do need salt you have to add salt to bring out that flavor in the vegetables i prefer to do it a little bit later on in the process okay All right. so do you need your flour yet in a minute almost. almost there almost i've been making roux for as long as i can remember <laughs> that was one of the first things my mom taught me oh really oh yeah do you want a um would you like this i will get that yes okay It'll be easier than my fork. <laughs> a lot of handle, yeah. There go. <laughs> Perfect. All right. And then now this is going to go quick. I love yeah. your earrings today. They're gorgeous. Oh, thank you, thank you. Got my hair all cut off, and yeah, we this was, didn't uh, recognize you when we first came. What we wanted to do. All right, now, Kath, I'm going to see if you're going to have that. Um, the cream. Nope. The chop that um, spinach up for me. We're going to go ahead and get that the in here. What? Here. The spinach, we're going to chop oh, yeah, that I'm gonna do that. and we're going to wilt that down. I'm going to do that. And all, all right. right. You want it chopped? Yes, chopped really, 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 really thin. small. Really small. small. Mm -hmm. We need to get this small. And it gives it such nice color, too, Martin. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love fresh spinach, don't you? Now, see, I like it okay chopped up in a salad, and I like it okay in things, but okay. just like plain, not particularly. Okay. Yeah, right. Any little, more? Um, no, I think this is good. That's I good. Think, I think you've got. And when do you need this wonderful cream? Not yet. We're going to add, we're going to get this cooked down. We're going to add this to our soup, swirl it up. And then once we know those potatoes are pretty cooked, then we're going to add our cream to okay, it. Okay, so I'll leave the cream out here yeah. for a while. You sure yeah. you don't want any more of those? Nope, I think I'm good with You think this. you're good? Yeah. Okay. So I'll put these away. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back on The Chef You and I with Marty Schultes and myself, Katherine Raker. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef You and I, and Marty has just got the wonderful soup boiling. Mm -hmm. And what she's going to do is she's going to add the roux, um, because the potatoes are done now, so she's going to add the roux to it. Yeah. And then it'll start thickening. Right. And here you go. Add that and along with the spinach that's in there. And right. the way I tested it before I knew to add this is I went ahead. That's good. Okay, is that it? Do you want yeah. one any more? That's good. That All right, that should be fine. Um, okay. I tested it by checking the potatoes and sticking a fork in them to make sure they're really super tender. So now we're getting some real nice thickness in this. It's going to be delicious. Looking really, really delicious. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit at this point now because my stuff is cooked already. Um, I want to go ahead and add my spices. So it is a um, teaspoon of tarragon. Just a teaspoon of tarragon in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some pepper in there. Grind up some nice pepper in there. And again, you can add more to taste. And I'm gonna put some, go ahead and get some salt in there. I added a little bit just before. And get a little bit more in there. We've already took, taken our bacon and we've chopped that up really, really well. Catherine went ahead and did that for me. You gonna add it now? I'm gonna go ahead and get that bacon in there. And the last thing I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and add my um, cup of cream, or you can use half and half, whichever works for you. So let me go ahead and get that in there. Oh, okay, here you go. All right, let me Oops. mix this up. I'm going to go down a little bit with this. I want to just bring it down a little bit. I don't want to scorch that cream. I just want to make it nice and creamy. All right, looks good. I'm going to go ahead and get this in here nice and slow. And actually, that's half and half. Is it half and or half? Or you can half? use heavy cream. Yeah, either way. I don't want to cool it down too much to start off with, but I don't want it boiling. I don't want this boiling as I'm adding it in. I just want to make it beautiful and creamy. And you know what you can do with that pan, Marty, 
is once you get it stirred in there, you can actually turn it off and, I mean, put the top on it and twist it and turn it off and it'll seal it. Okay. And continue to cook really okay, a little bit. So there we go. How's that looking? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely delicious. Scrumptious. All right. So we're going to let this just cook down a little bit more and then we'd be ready to go ahead and serve it. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead and get that on. And put that lid on just for a few more minutes. I'd say about another five, six minutes at the most, and we're good to go. Then it'll be delicious to eat. Okay, and I can't wait to I can't wait to try it, Marty. I I know it's going to be really, really good. Mm -hmm. But guess what? We need to get set up in a minute. We'll we'll serve that in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But we're going to set up for the next thing, which is our vegetarian. It's our puff pastry crown. Crown. We're going to mm -hmm. do that next. So we'll yeah. be right back after these messages. We're back on The Chef You and I with Marty Shulgees and myself, Catherine Raker. And now we're going to make what, Marty? It's going to be a puff pastry veggie crown. This is the easiest appetizer you can take. It's going to be great with our soup that we're making. It's just very um, colorful and pretty. Um, and we're using puff pastry, which is something that people don't really use a whole lot of. I don't which know I don't know, know why they don't. I don't know if they, you know, people don't know how or you're scared of it. There's nothing to be scared about with puff pastry. So you buy it in a two sheet pack. And this is what it looks like when you have, you pull it out of the box. It just unfolds like this. You want to make sure that when you're using puff pastry, it's thawed, it's, you know, because it will crack and you want to make sure that you keep it cold when you're using it. That allows the butter then to puff up on the pastry. So we're going to go ahead and put this one to the side. Um, I've laid it out on my sheet. I'm using parchment paper. I'm going to make a circle out of this. So I'm just going to do this a nice, easy, cheat way. I'm just going to cut off these corners here and do a circle as best as I can. I'm not going to make anything really um, fancy or anything. So just cutting that off to make somewhat of a circle. Okay, that's and cool. Take these pieces over here. I might lay them out later and use them. All right, so it's okay. kind of a circle, right? Kind of a circle. So okay. then the goal for me then is I'm going to go ahead and do zucchini ribbons. We're going to take little tomatoes and cut them in slices. I've got pine nuts here and feta cheese. We're going to put this all around the outside. And then on the inside, I'm going to slice out as a star. And then I'm going to pull these flaps and push it over and tuck it so it makes a nice presentation. So Kath is going to go ahead and work on getting me zucchini ribbons. <laughs> and this machine really makes it easy. Oh, wow. I love doing this. Your grandchild would love doing this, too. <laughs> right? So I think we're done with that, okay? Maybe there's one little thing here, but that's all right. So we want to take this off, right? And take this piece off, right? Because all it is is a lift, and we're going to drop that down. And then I'm going to take this out here. And here's the zucchini. Okay, perfect. Look at the zucchini ribbons. Nice. They're really Very pretty. Really nice. Right? Right. And zucchini's great for you. So, yeah. and I didn't take the seeds out, but look what happens when you do it. It takes the seeds out for you, right? <laughs> Sweet. That's fun, Sweet. right? All right. So here's the puff pastry. I just want to kind of show. I just made a star in it. So what I want to do when I'm lining my vegetables around it, I want to go around the outsides here. I want to go around the outside. So then it gives me the ability to take these and just tuck them. But before I go ahead and do all that, while Kath is cutting me up some tomatoes, I'm going to do an egg wash on it. So I'm just going to take an egg okay. and whip it up a little bit here and use a pastry brush to um, coat the outside of it, make it look really nice. Might need one egg, you might need two. I'd rather go ahead and do two at the same time so that I go ahead and have them. Just whip those babies up. And it's going to be delicious, Marty, because this, you know, vegetarian, this is an all vegetarian meal. Mm -hmm. This is a about beautiful it. appetizer to take. It's not going to take a whole lot of time. We've got the oven heating up to um, 400 degrees. So um, we're just going to, you know, get that 400 going. And again, I'm just going to, just going to do a nice little egg wash over this. Gives it a nice, beautiful color when it comes out. It's so light, too, when it pops up. Yeah. You're going to love it. Your, your guests will absolutely love it. Well, it looks like you fussed a lot more than you really did. 
which is <laughs> the best appetizer to take. And, you know, we could make puff pastry, but it's so easy to buy it. You know, but if you're a major cook and you want to make it, there's always a recipe out there to make it, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So right. I think that's plenty enough for me. I think so, too. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start on putting the ribbons around. Aren't these fun? Aren't these And aren't fun? you kind of glad that I didn't have a big ribbon <laughs> because there's a small <laughs> circle, right? Yeah. Those yeah. are cute. Yeah. Just going to move these around. All right. And you could put almost any vegetable on here that you want it. Um, just kind of kind of depends on what what you feel like you like or what what would taste good to you what your guests would like how about what your kids will eat put something on that your yeah. kids will eat they might find this to be really fun right so this is super sweet because all these little ribbons right. um, and i do like to get some of the extra green on here right all these little ribbons we're going to go ahead and put our tomatoes inside of them right do you want, uh, well i think that's cool yeah, I think we're good. So we got a lot of ribbon there. Yeah, it's so a little go circle, ahead and isn't grab it? Grab some of these tomatoes. Right. I'm just gonna put them. Just like make it said, look really cute. You it, know, it just ends up being just a very pretty, pretty appetizer and something fun. And again, anything good, it'll go good with soup. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go ahead. You could make four of these. You know, if it's a big crowd, then you just bring more. That's all. Okay. Right. Um, the next thing we're gonna add is we're gonna go ahead and put some pine nuts on this okay and these are just absolutely delicious when they're toasted in the oven this, you don't have to pre-toast them they're all, they're going to bake yeah so you don't want to yeah. do that that looks really good and then the best part is the feta cheese and, and the feta yeah right all right that's probably plenty of that now this puff pastry is a little bit smaller than some sheets that are out there so um if you had a larger one you probably need about a cup of the pine nuts in the six whole ounces of the feta cheese we talked about just let's make another one let's just do two of them yeah so that's probably what we're going to go ahead and do because we have two and it makes it easier yeah yeah and this is going to be so pretty now remember when we made the other thing with puff pastry i forget what it was it mm. was it was mexican it mm. was great right yeah Again, it's something we don't buy very often, but I think that's something you, you shouldn't be scared of particularly. And more and more right. people are becoming vegetarian. So yeah. let's see you do All it right. now, So Mark. now I'm just going to take each one of my little baby triangles and tuck it. And just tuck it. Get back in there, Mr. Cheese, because you're not going anywhere. And that'll look really sharp, right? Yeah. All right. And if a few vegetables spill out, eh, they spill out. So yeah. what? So be it. Okay. Now we've got our beautiful ring. I'm going to take the rest of this egg wash or some more of the egg wash, and I'm just going to go over the tops that didn't get anything from the bottom. And just a little bit lightly. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Gonna make sure that feta I cheese really, gets really in like there. that. Do you want to make another one or not? Well, let's go ahead. We're gonna get this popped in the oven, and we probably will make another one because we have extra stuff. That's right. We'll see so how we'll it turns right. out in a few minutes. All right, we'll be right back, and we're putting it into a 400 degree oven between uh, around 15 minutes or until it's just right mm -hmm. lightly browned. browned. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sounds we'll be right good. back on the chef you and I just after these messages. We're back on the chef you and I, and Marty, this is the best one I've seen so far <laughs> i mean i'm a i'm a sweet girl i really <laughs> like sweets especially apples mm -hmm. so we have just had our producer do the apple slices for us so we're going to chop these up in little pieces right so what we're making is puff pastry apple turnover again another alternative for your puff pastry so i've got ahead while kath is um go ahead and slicing those really small um, I've got the puff pastry sheet. I've unfolded it. You want it, mine's a little warm here, so we're going to get going on this. You want to keep this as cold as possible, again, so that butter, so it puffs up. This recipe, you're going to take your sheet of puff pastry and you want to make little squares. So out of this, I'm going to make nine little tiny, tiny squares in this, and I'm just going to cut it to make nine tiny little squares. But if you had a bigger... Um, piece of um, puff pastry 
they would be bigger squares. Right. You can make it the size. You, honestly, with this recipe, you can do anything you want. Get it in the middle. Get your stuff in the middle of it. Fold it over. Egg wash it. It's good to go. So we're going to go ahead and take this cup of sugar here. And then the recipe is cinnamon to taste. So it depends on how much you like cinnamon. I love um, cinnamon. I like cinnamon. I don't want it to be too um, cinnamony. Too cinnamony. It's like when you walk into one of the stores, they now have the cinnamon brooms out, and you're like, ho, oh, ho, way too much. So right there, I've used about a teaspoon and a half. Just going to mix this up. That Don't you put lemon on this, or am I wrong? Mm -mm. Don't, no don't have to do it because we're going to bake this right away. Okay, we're going to bake it right away. So All you've right. got those. They look really good. Um, I'm going to get you, if we don't mind, get another little bowl. I want to add the sugar in so I'm not overpowering it with too much sugar. So we get okay. another little bowl here. Little bowl? Just a second? Yeah. Here we go. Great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, here you go. Thank you. Okay, so if you want to throw those apples in there. I'm going to go ahead and start on this while you're doing the other apple. Okay. Loved it. We used an apple peeler core slicer. How Which I've had forever. Yeah, yeah. How easy was that? So I'm going to take about half this mixture maybe. Mix this up good in here. Take a look at this and see how mixed up. Okay. So used about half this mixture here for one apple. You can see they're all nice and coated. Not adding any butter or anything. There's plenty of butter in puff pastry, so you do not need to add the butter in here. Now, here's going to be the beautiful part of it. I'm just going to take a little, going to take a little bit and put it in the middle, and then I'm going to egg wash them real quick here, and then egg wash them on the top. So just just a little bit here. I have to turn off this wonderful puff pastry. It looks mm. beautiful. What do you think, Marty? Turn around and tell me oh, what you think. Oh, yum. Yum, 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 yum. We're going to yeah. take this out. We're going to stop that. And See, then we're going to take this out. And I'm going to move this beautiful soup to the back. All right. So those are all and done. And bring this out, Marty. Okay. So I'm just going to put a little dollop in each, in the middle of each one of these. Again, another great thing to take to a party, Oops. surprise your family for fall. All right, so now we've got, went ahead and got all my little apples and all my little squares. And then we're going to fold them over like a little envelope just about. Just tuck them and tuck it. Just tuck it like that. And I'm going to go ahead and just tuck the corners. This could be little appetizers, actually. Mm-hmm. You know, and then once they come out of the oven and they cool, then we're going to dust them with some powdered sugar. That sounds good. <laughs> and, have, and if we have time, we're going to do one last dessert that I promised we do, mm. which is actually a fruit tor uh, a fruit tortilla, and it's rolled. It's really beautiful. I will never say no to two desserts. It's really good. And I, the last Mexican show, I didn't even get to make it. Oh. It was sad. Well, we did a wet Mexican show, too, with Mexican street corn. That's up there on the chef, you and I, you know. And you that can see. Delicious. Oh, yes, that, that was delicious. Oh, that was. That was a great show. Yeah. All right. I didn't realize how much I love Mexican food. I do. I, I like do, Mexican too. Food. I mean, really good Mexican yeah. food. Look at these cute little packages. Cute little packages of deliciousness. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm just tucking them together. You can make, uh, turnovers can be in any shape or any size, doesn't really matter. Just make those little packages. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and egg wash these one more time, just a little bit to get on the top. These are going to go in at 415 for a 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, just until they turn brown. So you kind of have to watch your oven to see how your oven does. Um, but these will go in at 415, which will bake those apples up really nice. Nice meld. And again, when they come out, once they cool, we're going to dust these with powdered sugar. How about serving them with some ice cream? Doesn't that, Ooh, that sound sounds delicious? delicious. <laughs> wow. Tempt me yum, a little bit here. Yum. Huh? All right. These are ready to go. Then we're going to go ahead and get another batch of them in. 
and we'll be all set then. And we'll take a real short break, and we'll be right back on The Chef You and I with myself, Catherine Raker, and Marty Schultes. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef You and I, and, you know, we're going to make something a little different we're making fresh fruit enchiladas. The name of the company that sponsors this wonderful, beautiful tortillas is Chef Mex, and it's Poquito Mas. And uh, I want to thank Kevin McCarney, who gave us the wonderful flour tortillas. I was telling Marty uh, during the break that these beautiful, they're, they're flour tortillas, like they're all handmade. It's you absolutely they wonderful. Special looking. They're right, don't like you love it? <laughs> He has smaller really nice. ones, you know, he has mm -hmm. whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, spray this casserole dish. Can, can you open that up? We're going to spray it with our wonderful uh, corn huskers. And you can use this for, for uh, baking and everything. Corn huskers, duck, That's gourmet good. duck fat right. spray. Yeah. And it's wonderful. So here, we're going to put this to the side, right? Mm -hmm. Right there. And maybe over here, Marty. Yeah. I'll okay. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a roux just like you did. Right. So, you're so I have to turn this on. Tablespoon right. Tablespoon and a half of that. Right. Half of it. Oh, those look beautiful. I think yeah, you're going to have to take the next ones out. They look good. I think you need to take yep. those out now. Okay. Here, okay. I'll I'll grab them. Okay, you want to grab them here? I'll grab them out. Here. So it looks like our first dessert is done. We're working on second dessert. Second dessert. Right. <laughs> So, All right. and I'll move, I think you might have to move this. Watch your stuff. Yeah, well, those will come out fine. See Yummy. how beautiful those are? Oh, they look gorgeous. Great. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set Here's these. that, there's a thing right there. I'm going to set them on this trivet right here. Yeah. Move that away. Oh, the smell. Yum. Oh, my gosh, that's gorgeous. Perfect. All right, there we go. So these are almost done. We could actually move those over a little bit, right? And that would probably work. Yeah. And we'll check on that in about five minutes. Yeah, watch yourself. Okay, so in the All meantime, right. we are actually doing, uh, melting the butter over here for a roux. Okay, so she's got her butter. She's going to go ahead and get it melted. Right. Um, over medium heat. Once that gets melted pretty good, mm -hmm. we're going to go ahead and whisk in our flour or use a fork you can whisk in too. With the, right. With a fork just to make a, a, it's kind of a sweet roux actually is what, Yes, we're gonna make. I'm going to add in the flour. Okay, so Kev is going to go ahead and add in the flour. We're going to keep moving on forward here on this. Okay. All right, once that gets all mixed in, okay, then, then we're going to add our vanilla, our cinnamon, and our white sugar. Okay. So we're going to get, I'm going to give you this. Okay. And this is going to be a very sweet sauce that you're going to put over the, over it. So mm -hmm. I need this. The sugar. Right. And I need the cinnamon, cinnamon, and, and then a I, half a, a teaspoon of your vanilla. Vanilla, there. okay. Yeah. If and it's like me, I use a dollop. <laughs> I'm pretty bad about measuring. Do it. Right. Measuring a uh, yeah. Vanilla I don't out. measure vanilla. I love vanilla. Okay. So this is the part that you really kind of have to watch for. Um, it's already sitting down at low. So what Kath wants to make sure that um, once it gets a little thicker, it'll coat the back of a spoon, but not two. And here's a spoon for you. Okay. It'll coat the back of a spoon um, mm -hmm. and kind of stay on it, stay on the back of a spoon. Mm -hmm. All right. We're back on the Chef You and I, and we're making the fresh fruit tortillas. So I'm going to put the fruit in the center of this, right? Mm -hmm. We use strawberries. Strawberries. Blackberries what? and raspberries. All Great right. Great combination. Yeah, that looks good. All so right. then what we're going to do is we're going to roll it like this. And we actually could put a little bit more fruit in this, right? Because when you're rolling it, you want like that. So this is it. And seam side goes down in the pan with the sauce. We put about a half a cup of sauce in that pan. Yes, I did. And then, and then I'm going to do these like that. All right, we're going All to right. continue filling them. Yes, and then I'm going to get another one. And these are the wonderful fresh tortillas. And when you get these, when you order them and you get them, Marty, the cool thing about it is, is that they come 
you know, they deliver them to you. Mm -hmm. And you can freeze these, put them in the refrigerator. Oh. And th the nice thing about tortillas is that you can make them ahead of time and freeze it and then have it whenever, right? Mm. So I think I'm going to do this this time, like this, right? I'm going to make them a little bit smaller and do this. And how about that? There you go. There you go. That's even smaller. Mm. So let's make four of them because we've got enough fruit there to do that. And so... I love these tortillas. I mean, I and love I, them. This is a recipe I would not have thought of using tortillas with fruit. It's just oh, not, not something I think about. So that's kind of nice to be able to do think, something oh, different. Yeah, it is really. It really is nice to be able to do something different. Yeah, we we did quite a we did a lasagna. We did a Mexican lasagna. Oh, right. Mm. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to roll them like that. And that's a little more fruit than I thought. But then we're going to put those down. doesn't matter what size yeah. they are. Again, and one second, more. Second dessert. Always good. Oh, I love, and you know I love dessert. Oh. And um, the last time we made, well, excuse me, the mm. last time we made the, the Mexican dinner, I didn't have enough time to get it done. Mm. So I promised Mr. McCarney that I was going to get it done for him. <laughs> so that's the reason why I thought it would be perfect to do this. So... And, and you know, you can make egg burritos for breakfast. Have you thought about that? that for good. I made some for my sweet husband. And we're going to we're pour gonna this. We're going to take that sauce and put it over that sweet sauce that we've made. Right. And look at that. Oh, my gosh. Does that look good? And then we're going to go ahead and, and put that in the oven. We're going to bake that um, 350 degrees for right. 15 to 18 minutes. Yes. And you need that liquid. You need that liquid. And these are going to be great. And then we could add some fruit on the top and maybe even some whipped cream <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Always right? trying to make it better. Yep. Yeah. And so you want to save a little bit for when it's done, right? Yeah. So that, mm -hmm. that's right. good. We'll so go we'll put those, those in the, in the oven. oven. Oops. And if you can open the oven up for me, I would really appreciate it. Oh, there you go. So I think... I'm going to put it right here. What do you think? Middle rack. That sounds good. Yeah, that sounds yep. good. So right. 350, and we'll put the timer on About here. 15 to 15 to 18 minutes is what they suggest. 15. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's do six, 15, 16. Because uh -huh. my, I have a gas stove that cooks pretty fast. So what we're going to do is take a real short break, and when we come back, we're going to put everything out for you and see how wonderful it looks together. Great. Great. We'll Sounds be right good. back. We're back on the chef, you and I, and this is the best part, Marty, <laughs> right? <laughs> when you get to eat it, right? That's right. First dessert and, and second. <laughs> yeah. So we just finished the uh, enchiladas, the mm -hmm. fruit enchiladas with the sweet, beautiful sauce, which I can't wait to taste. And mm -hmm. those are right there. And if you wanted to decorate it or anything with more fruit, you know, when you put it onto a plate mm -hmm. to serve it, you could. Okay, and some people do that. Then your, talk about your stuff. Okay, so here we started off with my um, potato soup with um, the carrots and potatoes and bacon in it. So yum, it just smells delicious and thickened it up with a roux and thickened and put some spinach in it and then added some cream to it. Then we went over to our bread product here and we did puff pastry. We did a veggie crown ring. And you could just smell that beautiful feta cheese just coming through. It just smells really delicious. Um, then we started with first dessert, which were, again, puff pastry with apple turnovers. Just made that apple mixture, folded them over. We finished them off then with some powdered sugar. Wow. And then we have our second dessert. Which that we is just took out of the oven, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so we're warm. not going to put yeah. anything on it right now. <laughs> I want to thank you so much, Marty, mm -hmm. for coming and being part of our show every time. I love having you. And we have to say thank you to our sponsors, mm -hmm. which are 360 Pans or AmeriCraft. Also, the duck fat spray from Cornhuskers. That is, that is duck, gourmet duck fat spray from Cornhuskers. Mm -hmm. And also, we want to thank our producer who does all the work for us. And, and beautiful tortillas. And the beautiful tortillas from, from Chef Mex. We mm -hmm. want to thank Kevin McCartney for sending them to us. And that's Poquita Moss. We'll be back next time mm -hmm. on The Chef You and I. <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Bon appetit. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on The Chef You and I show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe 
Don't forget to visit our website, thechefuni.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show. 